what would you love to see for your brand? So would you love to see you guys being like NHL affiliated or MLB affiliated? What, you know, what does that look like? I think our answer isn't so much like we want to, you know, pioneer in the MLB or the NHL, the NFL. We do, but I think at a higher level than that, we say, uh, we actually got it from Billy Horschel, who in an article with him said, you know, Beam's going to be the Nike of wellness. This is Start the Storefront. Today's guests are Matt Lombardi and Kevin Moran, co-founders of Beam, a line of THC-free CBD products. Beam was born from the aches and pains of athletic competition. You see, both Matt and Kevin were professional athletes, and though there are many rewarding aspects to that achievement, it is not without its drawbacks, namely the physical toll it takes on one's body. When the two of them concluded their professional careers, the CBD market was still in its infancy. But Matt and Kevin were quick to see the potential for CBD in both overall wellness and market growth potential. Looking back on their decision to start a CBD company, it seems like a no-brainer. But as you'll learn in this conversation, it has been far from easy. So listen in as we cover everything from busting all the myths and misconceptions about CBD, the trouble with opening a bank account for their business, and why they decided to shun the THC market. Now, back to the episode. All right, guys, welcome to the podcast. On today's show, we have the founders of Beam. Matt, tell us a little bit about your company and uh, who you guys are. Yeah, thanks for having us. So I'm Matt and co-founder Kevin with me. And we are a wellness company. And at the high level, we're, just, we're a wellness company really focused on helping people reimagine their path to health and wellness. And that all began about three years ago. We were training for Boston Marathon together. And we, you know, even back getting a little bit more, Kevin and I both met at Boston College where Kevin played hockey. And then we were both fortunate to play professionally for a number of years after. We both retired. We had different injuries that, you know, forced us out of sports a little bit sooner and earlier than they thought we would. And we were friends back in school. We weren't that close, but just we had a few classes and whatnot. We'd see each other in the weight room. But the fun part of the story is that we overlapped probably two or three years after we both retired, we overlapped an apartment building in Seaport to Boston. And it's funny, just like instantly became best friends. Kevin was training for an Ironman with his now wife at the time. I tried to jump in and hang with him in a few workouts. I'm not an endurance athlete, so it was pretty tough for me. But we just immediately bonded over our post sports, our, our passion for wellness and, you know, still trying to stay fit and active and all things health and wellness. And we decided to train for a marathon together. And it was during that, that uh, we started just become interested and curious about CBD being athletes. We always just thought, or we just were never, you know, THC it's, you know, close cousin. We just never really had a role in our lives. We used to get drug tests and things like that. And so I think, you know, roughly three years ago, like most consumers are just like, what is this stuff? Does it get you high? I don't understand how it can help with 50 different things. How can it help us sleep at the same time, you know, help you focus? So we just, we started to read a little bit more about it, really skeptical, you know, being athletes are pretty diligent about what we might put into our body or, or try and consume. And long story short, we both ended up, you know, I was in LA at the time, actually, so I was at Air One and I went in, I looked at the glass cabinet that has all these very medicinal medicine looking things behind the cabinet. And Kevin, I think you ordered something online and net net, we just, we both realized some really cool benefits from it, you know, relative to some chronic injuries and Kevin had some chronic migraine issues. So we just realized, wow, this is, this is pretty profound, these benefits that it has. And not all products were giving us benefits and, you know, solutions to some of our pain points, but you know, we went that and again, you know, we just took a step back and we looked at the space and saw, you know, there's a really interesting opportunity going on in this category. You know, one, it's just, you have just an emerging market. It's going to be maybe the one of the most popular health things in the next decade or so that really has a, a unique and beneficial way to help people be live healthier lives. And at the same time, there's nothing happening in this athletic active lifestyle space. Like everything looks so medicinal and apothecary and like you should really you know, the, the, the packaging was weird. The names of these companies were kind of weird. There's very just cannabis related, obviously, because it's in the cannabis category. But, you know, we thought that it was a really interesting way to build a unique brand, you know, build innovative products because everything also is very saturated in terms of tinctures and topicals and pet supplements and vapes and patches you put on your arms. And, you know, we thought, you know, there's really one making this mainstream yet and really bringing it in a different way. And so, Beam was born really out of this unique personal experience with it. And then, you know, just seeing a really big opportunity to do something different and pioneer something in the space. Kevin, if you want to fill in some gaps there. 
just for context, what year was this when you either were at were Irwan or even the seed existed around, hey, maybe this, this could become something? 20, the spring 2018, I think, or like early into 2018. 2018. This is like probably more back in 17. So okay. We started having some early discussions about it. Well before we really thought we'd, you know, start a business, but more just starting to be interested in it. Yeah, you were looking at it like it's something that's helping your recovery. Obviously, as a professional athlete, that's something that you guys would spend a tremendous amount of time on. And this is a unique perspective. And I want to dig into this because it's obviously we talk about recovery all the time. We had the Theragun founder on and so percussive devices and, and basically recovery is a huge component for two people, both of you who had, I would imagine, spent a tremendous amount of time doing all sorts of stuff, cold baths, stretching of all, right, cryotherapy maybe. Once you started testing or going down the path of CBD, was it something that was just immediately instant for both of you in terms of how you felt or did it take some yeah, time? Good, yes and no, I, I would say. It's a very, really common misconception of CBD. Like you take it and all of a sudden, like you have, you know, aha moment in your life. And I'd say over the course of like a couple of weeks, it was, you know, Matt as an example, say, hey, my knees and ankles are feeling better when we've been running so much. For me, I, Matt mentioned I had chronic migraines and it became like, hey, I used to get these every once a month. It's been, a, it's been three months now and I haven't had one. So it was, it was more something like that. I mean, the way CBD works, which you can get into probably in a subsequent part of the conversation. You know, to Matt's point, it's, it's very closely related to its, its cousin THC, the both cannabinoids, but works very differently. So yes and no, it's kind of a tough answer, but both, yeah. Got it. Yeah. And I think that's important because I think there are people who think, oh, let me put this in my cocktail and I'm supposed to feel something immediately. Exactly. Uh, there's a lot of places here in LA that they'll give you a couple drops of the oil in a cocktail. And I'm like, what's the point of that? I'm not sure what you're trying to achieve. Yeah, there, yeah. It's a lot of our, strategy. It is. It is. Yeah. We, our, our, a lot of our thesis from the beginning was like what kind of informed the branding and us getting to market was that this is just so misunderstood. There's not an opportunity for a brand to create a really transparent, beautiful brand and also to educate people. And it just wasn't happening. We think this is going to be like a, you know, a collagen protein or, you know, yeah. a lifestyle something that people take. And, you know, you don't take your collagen protein and then stare at your fingernails to see how quickly they grow. You know? yeah. <laughs> so it's true. I think the hard part of this too is like, so you see an opportunity, you realize there's a lot of, let's call it bad products or bad marketing in the space. You're thinking maybe we can do something different at the same time, the barriers to entry in this market are zero in some ways, right? It's like anyone can do it. And so Always. that poses, oh, right. <laughs> And then we have science, which plays an interesting role. Let's jump into what, kind of what we were just talking about, right? So give people a sense of what it does, why it works, what is the science, why does it take, I, I think it takes different for different people. I've also heard that, especially, yeah. I guess there are some combinations where some people do use THC and some people will feel that effect. But if you remove the THC, some people don't feel that. And I just want to jump into the science. I know a little bit, obviously not nearly as much as you guys, but would love to jump into Obviously, you guys have done some research. So if you get deep fast, so I guess I'll I'll start and yeah, let's uh, do it. I'll start not deep, and we I'll trivialize it, and we can kind of go from there. Where do we want to start? So cannabis, right? Hemp and marijuana are both part of the plant family of cannabis. Our CBD is extracted from the leaves and flowers of the hemp plant. The way CBD works, and again, for any of the science buffs out there, I'm sure I'll get some messages, but this is <laughs> not exactly how it works, and I'm trivializing it. But think of your endocannabinoid system, which is um, a system in our body that it's pretty interesting. We didn't find, we didn't even know as humans that we had this in us until like the late nineties. And it's think of that. A, right? Cannabinoid that? A, I think. Cannabinoid yeah. A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. think of that system, like almost regulating everything going on in your body. Uh, I, I use to trivialize it. I call it like the brain body connection, if you will. And mm -hmm. over time, when we're stressed out, we've had tough workouts, whatever's going on in our life, that connection gets frayed and broken. And there's a lot of science now that's pointing to the fact that like, when that connection is messed up and those receptors aren't firing the way that they're supposed to, it leads to a lot of chronic issues, you know, uh, inflammation, stress, anxiety, insomnia. And what's really unique about CBD and what's been so profound about it is we've seen that high quality CBD has the exact same receptors in it that we have in our bodies. So think of them almost like these little spark plugs that are reigniting this broken system within your body and putting everything back together. The analogy we always use is think of it almost like, um, premium engine oil that you take throughout your day to bring your body back into balance. And that's why there's so many profound issues and why it's such a transformative, to Matt's point, you know, it could be the biggest wellness supplement of our decade or even of our lives. It's helping people with stress and anxiety, with chronic inflammation, it's helping them sleep deeper. It's all these things. So at the same time, when you're early on in an emerging market, you get, oh, this is snake oil, but really it's just, it's bringing your body back into balance into the state of mind it should be. So that was like, yeah. 
part science, part storytelling, but that's, that's like the, I mean, we can get a little bit deeper if you'd like. I mean, the, the thing I've, I saw, so it's funny, we have a lot of experts on the podcast and somehow I, I've managed to learn from all of them and then regurgitate it. But the, the best example I saw, it was, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was part of the research paper in the 90s. And it was, the example was, was being given that today, if you, if you think about your body, just like a set of like light strings or something, right? And if this light string over on this, in this quadrant, call it light string six is out then we create a medicine. So a medical company comes and they say, oh, you look depressed. Okay, here's a little depressive, right? So let's click, light six is for depression. Here's a, a, a drug essentially that, that makes you, kind of numbs that area. But in that there's a bunch of symptoms. And so light four or five and eight aren't feeling as good anymore because the thing that you're trying to do to solve light, light six is, is problematic. And then let's say light one is now out. So now I'm taking another drug. And basically my, what ends up happening is my whole system right? And so my whole brain, my whole human beingness is, is being, is off because I'm treating one thing, but I'm getting all these side effects. And effectively what CBD does, according to the research paper, is it, it kind of helps the system, but it completely heals it without any of these negative symptoms. And so today the market exists where problem A, take drug A, create problem C, D, E, F, G. And now by the time, you know, now I have like a supplement pack of multi, not vitamins, drugs. Mm-hmm just to get through the day. And it seems like CBD is, right? Is that accurate? That's, well, that's kind of the way to, it's, yeah, okay. It's a cool analogy. Yeah, it's just, you know, think of your ECS as just like, it's responsible for keeping everything in balance and working to heal different, you know, whether it's inflammation, digestion, stress, sleep, all these different things. And so CBD helps your ECS, which is then helping like what you were describing, this whole web of stuff. So that's why it can be, I don't want to call it like a fix-all or a cure-all, but that's why it helps with such a menu of things or why you see so many benefits associated with it because it's, it's impacting something that is then impacting such a great, like your operating system in a way. It's very confusing too, though, from an education perspective, there's all different types of CBD in the market that, you know, there, which we can talk about too, which from a consumer perspective becomes really complicated in a space that there's no barriers to entry to your point. Let's do that. So if I, <laughs> let's pretend that I decided to start, start a CBD company today. And so maybe I go on Alibaba or maybe I just Google like CBD oil and I just see stuff, man. I don't even know if there's like a quality assessment, probably not, but how do you, how did you guys go in your process of getting to either high quality or high functioning, whatever it is, whatever the label is. I, I would say first, good luck getting a bank account. Um, that was the okay. first. <laughs> that was the first thing that we were just blown away how difficult it was just to get a simple business checking account. I mean, you could literally walk into a bank and set one of those up in five minutes. We pretty much had to go to the ends of the earth. Now we don't have any banking issues given the size of our business and the capital and the funding and things like that that we have. But it was really, really difficult because we wanted to set everything up and do everything the right way. You can obviously not do that, but you run the risk of your assets getting frozen. We, you know, we've seen these happen to companies in, in real time, you know, when we're early stage and we still see it today. Did you guys have to go to Canada? No, we're, we're lucky to find something domestically. We don't even share it still just because it was like a competitive advantage, but we literally just, we found a bank that had a, a big THC practice with dispensaries and things like that. And we were their first CBD company. THC is actually easier to set some of those basic business things up just because they're there it's actually there's just a big structure put in place and if you want to open a dispensary or store there's just like a very specific Mm. way you go about doing that cbd is just such a gray open-ended thing that there really wasn't a process in place and so a lot of you know banks just weren't touching the category and pretty much still aren't so the to go back to your question though in terms of just like finding product and you know where it's sourced on those things so when we looked at the space and you know, started reading and doing a lot of the diligence on it, it, it was really obvious that not all CBD is the same, meaning from how the plant is grown to what ends up in a bottle that a consumer will consume or take home. And for us, we really wanted, again, because we were going to have this athletic focus and we understood athletes are so interested in trying it because recovery, sleep, like inflammation, like those are huge things for athletes to focus on. And, and to, they're constantly looking for the edge and how can, if I can sleep better, if I'm recover faster from a workout, that's massive for them. But they're like, I'm not touching this stuff. Like I can't fail a drug test because my career's over. So for us, it was hugely, hugely important to find the right partner and process to take a you know, a very high quality product and to make that we could put our stamp of approval and say like, you will not fail a drug test if you use Beam. I would just say like, we have a lot of trade secrets in our process, but we go 
through a very diligent testing and filtration, all these different things that our standards in terms of like THC and other stuff in it is way below just what the industry standards are in terms of like what can be in the product. So we go even below where what allows, you know, technically you're allowed to have trace of THC and all these different things. We test it to a, a degree stronger to, to go way below those, those standards, just because we, we pretty much ride the whole brand on that in terms of the transparency and cleanliness of the products. When you say lower, you literally mean like the parts per million or something. You mean, yeah, right? you mean parts, you're, you're getting parts per yeah, billion, yeah. parts yeah. per billion PPBs. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you don't mean lower, like your standards are lower. You mean the, the trace <laughs> amounts. standards are higher. The parts standards are higher. Are, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Got it. Yeah. It, it's interesting to me because, and, and maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong in my head, it's just a plant, right? So it's like, how complicated can it be? But apparently it's really complicated for some reason. Why is that? Do people just start adding things to it? It's all about the process. Like I'm trying to think of a good analogy. I don't know. I, I, this probably a stupid it's one. Getting like, a piece of steak at, you know, yeah, a really great steakhouse and, and getting a, a beef patty at McDonald's. Like it's just, okay. or like even sure. like the hamburger bun you get at McDonald's. I mean, I think you can leave that thing out and it doesn't go bad for like years. <laughs> yeah, that is, that actually is a good analogy. I mean, like it, it's, it's all beef, right? But like right. how did it get there? Right. Where did it come from? How was it sourced? How was it processed? Who touched it? How did they touch it? All of those things that just are just mind numbingly detailed. Yeah, that makes sense. I want to thank McDonald's as our sponsor at this time. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the beef? No. Um, all right. So totally makes sense. What's the first step? So once you guys do all the research, you got your banking set up, all that's good. What is the first product that you guys, did you focus on, did you know you wanted to roll out a few products, a line of products, or did you just want to hit one and get some testing? What was that first step? Um, we didn't know much in the beginning. Yeah, uh, there, it really, it wasn't, so kind of like where we are today with our, we can talk more as we get into this, but you know, our family products today, the brand where it's at today. We kind of had, I guess, more like the startup mentality, you know, to use the term, the MVP, like what's our most, what's our minimal viable product? Like how can we get, you know, not slacking on anything from a brand and quality and all that stuff. Like how do we just get to market? Like, especially in Boston, people really were skeptical about CBD, you know, versus mm. the West Coast. So how do we just get some product out here and start talking to people without putting, you know, a ton of capital in this and just make sure that there's interest here and then we can evolve and, and grow from there. So. I'd say it started, we launched with an oil and a salve, which, you know, are more traditional products in the space. You know, those are also products we would say they're, they're much more saturated and easier find and, and common. But, you know, we created those. It was really just like, that was our, we thought our most intelligent way to launch Beam, which was again, get some market feedback, talk to people, see if our brand resonates, our messaging, our story of being athletes. And then from there, we, we always had this idea that, or insight or hunch that, innovation in the space is going to be really important because it is so, so saturated to your point. If you want to start a CBD company, Google private labeling, white labeling CBD, you'll get thousands of hits and you can, you know, put a label on something, put a product out there pretty quickly. So we really have been harping and working towards this broader idea that one, what are the pain points really that people are experiencing? CBD is interesting because unlike other stuff, you know, like I take a protein shake after workout. It's not so much because you have this, you know, raging pain point that you have to solve. It's more like, I know this is healthy for me. It'll help me recover and make me healthier. The CBD, it's like, I can't sleep. My, you know, my knees are killing my inflammation, pain, anxiety, stress, all these you know, very acute things. We understood that people had these pain points, like how are they communicating them? And then how do we those in a unique approach? And how do we be really thoughtful about what we put CBD into? Because people put it into sports bras and I saw like, I think it was Carl's Jr. had a CBD hamburger. Like there's a CBD going in everything, cocktails wow. and restaurants. So we have this approach that, you know, we have our four categories of families that we refer to as balance, performance, recovery, and sleep. Mm -hmm. And within each of those families, how do we then build functional products to really meet those needs with those, you know, overlying family products are. And so we wanted just to test the market and then really lean into this functional 360 model of here's our approach on impacting your wellness. Yeah. It took a long time to get there. I think, um, and a lot of feedback from customers to get to those four categories. Yeah. And I, I'm just curious about this and this is kind of a deviation, but what was it like raising capital given this, this new market, right? Was it easy? Because in some, in some ways, you know who the players are, right? You, and, and they're committed. And so if I'm an investor in CBD, it's like, here I am, and there's only so many of us, and we're kind of on this island. But at the same time, it's like, what, what was that process like for well, you guys? It's interesting you say that. I, I think 
as counterintuitive as, as this might sound is we wanted to be in the cannabis space, but really far away from the cannabis space. So like we right. actually shied away from people that were interested in investing in CBD, like from a fund perspective. What was great about Obvious Ventures who led our last round of funding, they shared a very similar thesis to us on um, with some education, this will become a mainstream lifestyle supplement. And the no THC thing. We really right. leaned into that versus compared to a lot of other companies in the space. But raising money is just hard in general, I would say. A lot, you get a lot of no's and you got to be uncomfortable with that. But there was probably some people that, you know, it scared them off. I, you know, at the line that I always talk about is like, you know, when you talk about the risk in the space because of what it is, there's also more opportunity because we're in an emerging market that's not super saturated. So you can look at that from whatever lens you want. Yeah, I guess the way I look at it as like a, a startup person, it's it's super exciting because you're you're moving into you're almost like a pirate, right? It's like oh, here we are discovering a new land, kind of a thing, and that's exciting. But at the same time, it's like you the education of of a new market. It takes so much time to educate people, and so as you guys think about that component, let's do two things. One, when you think about your marketing or even like your your social media, like how much is education just a part of your your messaging? It's a big part. And I would say in a couple ways too, and Matt, you can elaborate on this. Like a big part of it is, hey, read this blog. This is how the endocannabinoid system works. This is what CBD is. This is how it's different than THC. And then there's doing it in a, in a not as a direct way where we bring in partners to the business, like Danica Patrick's an investor, Billy Horst on the PGA tour, or some other professional athletes where, you know, we, part of our thesis is we believe that people trust and listen to people that they emulate. So when folks like that are helping us educate the brand and bring the product to market, that's education in, you know, in kind of a different way. So really, our mar- I think the majority of our marketing strategy to be candid is some very direct education, but really a 360 education with all these different kind of pillars of marketing, I would say. Some less uh, obvious ways, but in our mind, like it's just getting the messaging across that this isn't gonna get you high. Uh, we regulate our products these ways, all of those things. The question I have, so we had Theragun on and, and their strategy was basically like the, fo- the football world kind of grabbed them and took them in no direction. Then we had a company called Art of Sport on, which Kobe Bryant was actually the co-founder of. And in that scenario, obviously having Kobe and they ended up getting James Harden. And basically in doing that, they got the entire NBA market. And so when I looked at that as an outsider, it was like, one seems like the product is leading the marketing. The other seems like these guys are sitting in a boardroom being like, we're not going to market until we have all the players. Right. And, and, yeah. and I look at Theragun today and now they have Colin who just won, uh, he just won a major, he's, he's a golfer and they have athletes, they have tennis players. Right. And so I think about it and I, and I don't, I'm not judging these strategies because I, I find them both incredibly fascinating. Right. But also mm-hmm. purposeful. And so when you guys think of, obviously you guys, Danica, Danica Patrick, you mentioned as an investor, but as you think about like, what would you love to see for your brand? So would you love to see you guys being like NHL affiliated or MLB affiliated? What, you know, what does that look like? Or how do you guys even think? And I know it's hard. I know it's a hard question, but it's something that it's, that's the, that's the hard part of startup. It's like, do you choose? Do you not choose? How do you do it? I, th- I mean, I think our answer isn't so much like we want to, you know, pioneer in the MLB or the NHL, the NFL. We do. Uh, and we're doing things to to be in that position. But I think at a higher level than that, we say, uh, we actually got it from Billy Horschel, who in an article with him said, you know, Beam's gonna be the Nike of wellness. And for us, why we love that is that when we think of, it's kind of merging what you were just describing. So, and I'll generalize this a little bit, but typically when you see a really good supplements that athletes use, you know, it's a, for the most part, generally speaking, you know, the people that make those are very scientific and the product is great, but they just completely miss the marketing on how to communicate that mm. to the masses. So a lot of people just seem like I'm not a professional athlete, so I probably don't need what that person's using. Um, or just like the packaging is, you know, not really resonating to a mass audience. And then the other side, again, generalizing for the most part is that a lot of great consumer brands that have mass appeal aren't the highest quality products that like the best in the world that what they do use. So we've taken this approach of how do we build products that the 1% want to use and meet those demands, you know, again, around this idea of balance, recovery, sleep, uh, and performance. But then at the same time, how do we pair that and communicate it and package it and build the brand so that the mass audience still resonates and doesn't feel like, oh, that's way too intense of a product or brand for me because I'm not, I'm, I'm a yogi, so I don't, I'm not like a CrossFit athlete. I'm not the fittest person on mm-hmm. earth. So that's how we thought about 
I think what you're asking, which is we want to build products that the best in the world use because it's that's how high quality the products are. And then at the same time, we want to be able to express that and have the masses resonate with our brand uh, and create more of a mass appeal to it. Yeah, to be honest, this might sound uh, like maybe cocky or overconfident, but like the NHL and the MLB are great. Like, and those would be tremendous for us. But like, we think the brand can be can really be multifaceted to a lot of different groups of people. Yeah, no, I love that. And I think your, your branding, right? And even the way the product looks actually speaks to that. It seems very... It was very intentional, all of that. Totally, yeah. 100%. It looks very friendly in nature, which is um, obviously purposeful. You guys chose that for a reason, right? You could have went with something that looked like, I don't know, Formula One oil. <laughs> so as, as the brand started to evolve, I think, well, when we started, I, I was working full-time. I had a full-time job and Matt was um, doing in some other ventures as well. And it became really quickly apparent to us that it was solving really profound issues in people's lives like migraines and sleep and all these these big issues and for us it was like how could we we knew whatever we whatever we started there needed to be like a big purpose behind and obviously a profitable business if you're going to start a business and it became quickly apparent that the products weren't just helping like the one percent athletes of the world but there was really a lot of like our both of our, our parents and you know helping Matt's mom play uh, with her arthritis so she could play with her granddaughter. And it was like, whoa, this is like, a, there's a really massive opportunity here. To that, and then I keep going back to Theragun because in his setting, there was no science, right? And so when I had him on the podcast, he talked about how he created science. And now they have seven research papers done by the top institutions across the world around saying why this works. Do you guys feel like in some way you're cr literally creating science? Are you working with institutions? Are you doing any testing or that's probably early to say, but do you feel like you're like literally creating science in some way? We cr we're creating citizen science, we call it, meaning okay. it's the anecdotes from people who have the, you know, Kevin, just use your migraine story. It's just, you know, Kevin's, I didn't placebo not having migraines out of my, you know, <laughs> I, I dealt with this for years and all of a sudden I don't have any more migraines, you know, these debilitating migraines. So, and we have thousands of stories like that, that with our brand, but also just in the category in general, but within our brain, we have so many stories that, you know, people are just correlating using bean products to having these benefits too. And sure, you could say like some of that can be placebo. I think there could probably be placebo with anything, but at the same time, like there's just enough anecdotal evidence, our citizen science, we call it that it just points to that we have efficacious products. This is something that I'm always interested in. And I love asking people like you guys, these questions, because it's, it's an opportunity to get the messaging out there. And so what are the myths that you guys are either always combating or the things that you've learned, people like me, who are maybe who have never purchased a product, think about CBD and are just totally off on. What are like three things, three myths that you, we can debunk right now can about we get this? Three? Oh, go with oh, if, go with five. Okay. If you have go go with as many as you can. I, all CBD is the same. Okay. All CBD or CBD gets you high and it's THC. That it's illegal to take it. <laughs> what else, matter? Did I miss anything else? It makes you sleepy. And that, because that's because again, like how we've implemented CBD and different functional things that aren't correlated to sleep. It's like, why, well, isn't this going to make me drowsy? I can't take this during the day. And again, going back to the endocannabinoid system and how that works, it's not so much it makes you drowsy. There, there is science. If you took an absurd amount of CBD, it might have a drowsy effect, but it's not making you drowsy that helps you sleep. It's doing things to help your body do what it does to get into a deep state of sleep. I would say those are the, like... For me, the two of the main things, again, are just like, does it get me high and is it going to make me sleepy? I would also add another one is like that it's, that it's a myth, but also hard. I guess you could say this with any startup, like that it's really easy to start a CBD company. It's easy to start a yeah. really <laughs> bad CBD company. It's like, oh, you, you guys, of course you're doing well. You started a CBD company. It's like, <laughs> you know this with a right? podcast, I'm sure. Like it's easy to start a podcast. I, I yeah. get this question. I literally probably have one email or one one everything, one email, one LinkedIn message, one Instagram a week about someone saying, hey, uh, I want to start a podcast. So what should I buy? And I'm like, your podcast yeah. has nothing to do with a microphone and, you know, recording. It's got everything to do with what's your topic? What are you, what are you like even an expert in, if anything? And, yeah. and can you get enough guests to have a, and facilitate a good conversation? Because the worst thing you can do is have a, bring in like a monster guest and you don't even know how to talk into a microphone or how to read body language. And so, yeah, totally. Right. I, I get this yeah. all the time. And, and a part of me is I go, I go into supporter mode. I'm like, look, we're all on our own personal journey. So let me just be a fan and help them out. And we have like an email template at this point, basically being like, oh, you want to know what's in it? Here's my email template. Boom. And it takes me a second to send it. 
But the reality is like, they're asking the wrong question, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well said. Yeah. Yeah, that was well said. Which is great. I mean, that's why I love startup too, because it's like, I just go back to like, oh, if I'm LeBron, it, like I look at LeBron James playing basketball and I'm like, this, this is so, what an easy game this is, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, like me at 5'9", I, I have this thought I can shoot over LeBron. Like what a dumb thought, but it looks easy. And so I'm like, oh, I must be doing this so well that people think it's easy. And that's just the ego coming out and being like, oh, we got this kind of a thing. There's someone that reminds me of a good story. I mean, not to take this down like a super deep rabbit, rabbit hole, but I forget who it was. Like, do you know where I'm going with this, Matt? Like the Van Gogh story or whoever it was that the painter was. I forget who it was, yeah. but I'll probably butcher the story a little bit, but he was in a cafe somewhere. There's, and um, Picasso. Picasso, yeah. yeah. Um, a little girl walked up to him and said, hey, can you paint me a picture? And he painted a, you know, a quick picture in 30 seconds, drew it to her and gave it to her. And he said, no, this is going to be but however much it was going to cost, right? It's going to cost ten thousand dollars. She said, "Wait, this, this cost like this took you thirty seconds to do this." And he said, "No, no, no, this took me my whole life to, mm. to paint this painting." And so, like we, I, we talk about that a lot at the company of, like, from the outsider's perspective, looking in, it's like, "Oh my gosh, you guys just raised another round of funding, or you know, this product launch was so successful. Like that was so easy. It's like, oh my gosh, like that was that was not easy." But it just, yeah. I don't know why it reminded me of that. Like all the good things in my life. To your point, your podcast, Beam, whatever it is, like, totally. It's always that's a very common misconception. Yeah. And I'm also coming from a place of like helping, like we're literally just trying to inspire. I'm sure, you, I'm sure your product is all about helping people. Right. And so the ethos of it is not fame or money making or whatever. It's like, I hope to inspire more entrepreneurs because people will hear your story and they'll be 100%. like, wow, these, these guys met, they were athletes. They realized this, this new market and they decided to dig in and it, and it wasn't like, Oh, overnight, here's a product. It was like, they had to raise a bunch of capital in an unknown space where they couldn't get a bank account. And, and now here you are, right? It's evolving and you, yeah. we're still in it. We're still in it. We're in the arena. We're not some, somebody in the nosebleed seats, right? Yeah. We're like, we're in no. it. And there's a, yeah. I love that. Yeah. We're fortunate. We get to chat with a lot of entrepreneurs now where, who, where we were, you know, obviously not long ago. And people, oh, one of you must've been a biologist. Like one of you must've come from a <laughs> manufacturing background, right? It's just like, we literally had no experience in cannabis manufacturing, science, all these different things. It just we became obsessed with all the different elements of our business. And so we love getting to chat with now, you know, people where we were, you know, about a year and a half, two years ago and share obviously all those learnings and hopefully inspire their journeys. It's, I think that's one of the, there's so many things, but that's one of the things, you know, I know we both really enjoy getting to do now. We did that too. And you're, like, we were talking to so right. many other founders trying to pick their brains and we still do it. Um, yeah, I would say that. And then also having a team of people that like believe in a, in a the mission and kind of like the idea that we just like put on paper one day, that's super inspiring, really cool. And to see them each like a, their own personal journeys, you know, within the company and then also just in life and to work with them and to help. We talk a lot about when we hire people that it's, we want everybody to have a great financial outcome, right? To, to, for being to be super sure. successful, and really make a lot of money. But at the same time, it's a failure really, if we walk away from this and, you know, people haven't had a good experience or they haven't conquered some fear in their life or they haven't grown as a person. So that's really important to us too, with, from a cultural perspective. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I think a lot of people get that wrong. I can say this, especially in Silicon Valley. It's very much like we're on the treadmill and we're going to go. And if you can't keep up, sorry, it, that's kind of the, and it's, it's just the, it's like a mindset out there. It's really different. It's hard. It is hard. Yeah. And we certainly push people very hard. I'm not, I don't suggest that we're uh, not to, <laughs> sure and get the most out of everybody, but it's, you know, in a way that's loving, I would say. Yeah, I say I always think of support is the best currency, right? It's like that's the thing. If you if you give everybody that, everything else kind of takes care of itself. Just switch gears here. What has COVID been like for you guys? Obviously, people are now going to a grocery store like Irwan to buy products, and so are you guys ex like seeing a growth in certain in markets, whether it's retail and and or what has it been like for you guys? It's been good. It's been. Uh, I mean, it's. You can I be honest too. Yeah, you can no, be honest. I, every I mean, I uh, I'll say it in the context of like. It's been good for us, but we're also self-aware enough to realize like how really, really, really fortunate we are. It's been really bad for a lot of people. So we don't take that lightly, how good it's been for us um, and how lucky we are. I mean, we have products that help people with stress, anxiety, sleep, and we're an entirely direct to consumer based business right now. So when you look at COVID, we had a lot of good things going for us at the time. And also, I, th I think just from like a very macro perspective, people are realizing that, you know, their health and wellness isn't a trend. This is really important. And if they want to, you know, COVID or, you know, whatever's after COVID, just to, to have longevity in their life and happiness, they need to be happy, healthy, whole. And um, that we've obviously seen a, su a successful uptick from that trend. So 
really early on, people were leaning really heavily into our sleep products because of issues like March, April, May. And I, I guess, again, to bring it macro, like we've seen a really big uptick in business the last six months. Um, That's great. We expected that anyways, but we have kind of exceeded our expectations. And trust me, I've heard this of everyone we had on the podcast. And you know, this narrative that exists in the news to me is like, what is happening? Every time I talk to a founder, all of them are like, hey, we're killing it. And it's, and it's simple. It's because uncertain times came and they pivoted in the direction that they needed to. And whether that was education because their brand is so new or whether that was like Brooke, as an example, coffee shops aren't open. So we went heavy into the grocery store, mm-hmm. right? And it's just like anyone who was able, and I hate to even to call it a pivot, but anyone who was just able to focus on what was already working has seen double yeah. 2x growth, 3x growth during this time. And you have to, it's all about survival. In those times, you don't have a choice. You know, that's it's exactly like, right. Yeah. You're grabbing the closest life raft. Exactly. Yeah. And I'd say too, it wasn't just like COVID happened. Then all of a sudden overnight, like people just started going to our website and buying beam. We made a very conscious decision to lean into these things and to really lean into like, how do we get people to become more aware about beam? If, if our hunch is that they're going to be spending money into these types of products right now. And, you know, those first few months is when we announced publicly the partnership and investment with Danek and then Billy Horschel. And we have, I think by the time this comes out, but Baker Mayfield is an investor in Beam and we're doing something on the more personal brand side with him. So we, we've, those are just a couple of examples. Also creating products, like we just launched Focus a few weeks ago and the idea was like, okay, we're all working from home. So we launched this really cool capsule called Focus that pairs our CBD with nootropics and, and adaptogens to really give you a good mental um, boost again because we're all just sitting at home and probably not maybe moving around or interacting as much with other people so you know we've leaned into it from a whole strategy side like how do we thrive during this and not just try to like buckle up and hold on and what happens happens you know now we're setting out we're raising around of funding which is you know we have a great fundable story talking about some of that and you know so it's part partly the approach too it wasn't just Oh, you guys are CBD. Like, obviously you're doing well. It's like, no. Like we, <laughs> it's also funny too. Like we were talking about a second ago, like you might think, Oh, like, this is great. Like, you know, the company has that creates a uh, influx of demand, which is outside of your projections, creates supply chain and logistical issues and inventory issues. So we went from like, how are we going to survive the first few weeks of COVID to, Oh my gosh, this is actually probably a good thing in our business. How are we going to get more product faster? Right. <laughs> you know, like it's like, it's always just like something, you know? Yeah. It's funny. Cause it, basically at some point you just don't celebrate anything. You're like, this is great, but there's a fire on the other <laughs> side because of this thing. That's one of our biggest things. We, we talked about the, between the two of us as founders and also with the team, we just didn't, was that an interview doing last week and Aaron on our team said, you know, when we raised our, we did a $5 million round back in September of last year. And when that closed, everybody wanted to go out and, you know, celebrate and all right, kind of like a stop on the train. Yeah. We need to get better with that. That's for I'm sure. the same way. So I've done this in companies where I've just been really bad at celebrating the wins, like awful. Like obviously we raised money. This, that was the whole goal. We put a lot of energy into it. Why are we celebrating? Right. It's like, and then you realize your whole team really needs that excitement. And, and even if, even You're in right. my marriage, even in my marriage with my wife, I'm just like, like yesterday she bought a new car. I'm like, let's go have dinner. Let's just, let's celebrate <laughs> this thing. And you have to, you have to, even though it feels so unnatural for me personally, because my whole mind just goes to the next thing, right? It's like, you guys are doing the calcs on the run rate. You guys are doing the calcs on, okay, so 5 million gets us this far. And we hope that we hope we're right along the way a few times. So we don't have, right. And so it's like, you're not in a position because you're doing the calculus. It's a gift, yeah, it's a gift and a curse. Yeah, totally true. Well, look, what's next for you guys? Uh, you mentioned a new product. What, what are some of the things you can, you can tease? So we, so just mentioning, I guess, going back and kind of talking in the sense that episode probably comes out will be, so on Monday is when we do more of like a deeper unveil of really leaning into these four categories of balance, performance, recovery, and sleep. And then again, within each of those, we have multiple different products that one, it's really easy for consumer or customer. I have this pain point, like what is the best thing for me to get? It's very easy to look at and see based on the, the categories and, and functions. And so that, that's an exciting thing. Again, like even just talking about that, like, you know, we kind of lead into this, you know, really unveiling this cool beam brand evolution during COVID. And we launched Focus last week. It's gone really well. We have some fun stuff happening in January, probably like too early to tease it. But again, really just expanding, you know, beam being a wellness company, however that can be interpreted, but like really leaning into like, how do we impact people's health and wellness? And from the start, we've always thought of beam like beyond a CBD company, you know, what are the other unique ways that we can do that? And so we'll be getting into that early next year. Well said. 
Yeah, I'm like yeah. excited that about more this vague? nothingness. Like, I don't know what the hell he's talking about, but it sounded exciting. <laughs> it does. Oh my goodness. That's awesome. Well, look, tell everyone where they can find you guys, where they can buy your products, all your socials, all that good stuff. Social is pretty simple. Just at Beam. And then the website is www.beamtlc, like tenderlovingcare.com. Mm-hmm. I am at Kevin Moran 34 and Matt is at Matt Lombardi 24. Well, look, thank you guys for coming on the podcast and sharing your story. I'm very excited and uh, literally on the edge of my seat for January. So. <laughs> Thanks for having us.